and successful workstation. We're also going to um, touch on, towards the end of the webinar, how to report a workers' compensation claims. Um, please note that if you have any questions during the webinar, um, you can submit them via the chat option on the right side of the, um, your screen. My name is Courtney Seamer, and I'm the Director of Workers' Compensation Claims. Um, I will be speaking again towards the end when we um, discuss reporting workers' comp claims. We also have with us Kevin Dodson, who is our, one of our senior safety consultants here at CodeVantage. So I'm going to turn it over to Kevin. Hey, everybody. First of all, a little bit about CodeVantage. Uh, we are a top 10 professional employer organization. And what that means is we help out small businesses by handling their human resource needs, whether that be payroll or benefits or risk management or HR administration, whatever those things are. Uh, we have about 2,000 clients and nearly 50,000 employees. So we're, you know. And now for the disclaimer. Everybody's got to have a disclaimer. Uh, this is intended to provide general best practices and employment guidance. CoAdvantage does not render legal service. And this document was not prepared by attorneys, and the delivery of this document does not constitute the provision of legal counsel. So now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to ergonomics. Ergonomics 101. So what we're going to talk about specifically about that is we're going to learn what ergonomics is and why it's important. Uh, we're going to figure, learn how to be able to detect the early symptoms of problems. We're going to learn a list of comfort tips and quick fixes that you can implement on your own to improve your workstation and then teach you how to assess your own work area for ergonomics. So what is ergonomics? Well, in simple terms, it's the study of making things more comfortable for you to use. Specifically, it's the study of fitting jobs to people. It recognizes that People have different physical abilities, limitations, characteristics, you know, height, reach, vision, all those sorts of things. And it applies that knowledge to work design. Now, keep in mind that ergonomics as a whole can be applied to any sort of job, whether that's a factory job, a job where you're lifting all the time, a, a digging, whatever. It can apply to everything, but today we're specifically going to talk about workstation setup, so it's more directed to those of you who have desk jobs. So, yeah, okay, we know what it is now. Why bother? Well, because proper ergonomics workstation setup is going to increase your employee, employee efficiency, productivity, quality, and accuracy of work. It's also going to help you reduce injuries and workers' comp claims, which is something we all want to do. It's going to make your employees happier, and that feeds back into number one where you get better quality of work. And it's going to benefit the people individually by contributing to long-term quality of life. And we'll get into that a little bit later. So some of the uh, problems you can have, you know, strain. And let's talk about some of the symptoms of that. Uh, muscle aches, strains, and pain. You know, everybody's been sitting at the desk for a long time, and then you get up and you realize that, oh, my shoulder's hurt, and I really should have got up an hour ago. Uh, eye fatigue, tingling, numbness, or aching, and or warm sensations in the hands, arms, and wrists, and a decrease in grip strength. So those are kind of the, the early symptoms where you know something needs to be changed. So what causes these things? Well, there's three major things. Uh, frequency, excess force, and poor or awkward posture. And the frequency is, you know, repeating the same hand, arm, or shoulder motions using a mouse typing on a keyboard, um, long periods of sitting and or standing. And most people are guilty of this, if they're being honest with you, will not move for a long time because they're trying to get their job done, and that's, that's not good. So we'll talk about how to fix that later on. Um, excessive force uh, can be, you know, Excessive pressure, whether that means, you know, some people will squeeze their pen too hard. Some people will squeeze their mouse too hard, and some people like to rest their wrists on the edge of the desk. And those are all applying, you know, excessive pressure in areas that don't need that. And then poor or awkward posture. Along with the whole wrist thing goes bent or flexed wrists while you're typing. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the proper way in a minute, but that's one of the main causes of ergonomic issues overreaching while you're sitting at your computer. Uh, if you've got your neck bent too far forward, 
or if your arms and back aren't supported or you don't have enough leg support or leg room. And we'll go into a little bit more detail on these shortly. Some more things, some more problems, causes uh, poor lighting, whether that means screen glare from a fluorescent light over your head or, you know, bad overhead lighting, not enough light, too much light, uh, and stress. You know, when you tense up your muscles, that puts strain on your body and just overall just kind of makes you feel bad. Um, and then people don't always think about this one, but, but leisure activities, uh, all the repetitive or forceful activities, painting, playing tennis, knitting, gardening, all those things. I'm sure uh, everyone's heard of tennis elbow. That's a specific repetitive motion injury that is, it's, it's tendonitis basically, but it's, it's related to tennis. So all those things can be aggravated at work as well. So, all right, now we know what the problems are. So what are we going to do about it? Well, I mean, there's two components to your area, yourself and your workstation. So first of all, we're going to start out by assessing your workstation. And here we have a person properly seated at his or her desk. And you can see... If you notice the uh, the way the the arms and the elbows are, and the way the legs are, and we'll just kind of run around the list. We'll go um, counterclockwise. So first thing you want to make sure that you place the monitor directly in front of you. And you don't want to be looking off to the left or the right. And you want the top of the screen at or below eye level, roughly about an arm's length away. Uh, general rule of thumb: 10 to 15 degree viewing angle, and no closer than about 20 inches. You want to position your monitor to eliminate or minimize glare on the screen. Sometimes you can use a glare screen for that. You have to make specific glare shields for that, or you can turn it just a touch just to get the light right out, you know, the direct light off of it. Uh, you want to make sure that you have proper posture when you sit down. Um, you want a 90 degree or greater angle at the hips and knees, and you want your feet supported by the floor or the or the head or footrest. And there are many times that I've gone and done uh, assessments where I see, you know, the, the short person and the knees are dangling and legs are dangling. So you always want to make sure you have your feet properly supported and that you have enough clearance between the front of the chair and the back of your knees so you don't cut off your circulation. You want to place the mouse and other input devices, whatever that may be, tablet, whatever, close to the keyboard. Everything you want, the rule of thumb is to keep everything you use um, frequently close to you. You want to relax your shoulders and take frequent breaks, and there's a little bit more detail on that later. Now, um, we talked about ample leg clearance. You want to make sure you have clearance to move your knees and legs under the workstation. You don't want to be jammed up in there. And then, again, rest your feet firmly on the floor or footrest, or some people will use a phone book. There's all kinds of things you can do. Back to the elbows. This is probably the one that I see the most often is improper elbow angle. You want to make sure that you keep your elbows at a 90 degree angle or as close as possible and your wrists flat. You don't want them. You want everything in a straight line. Uh, you want to make sure the keyboard is adjusted so that you can keep that straight line. And you know, when you're typing, you, you've all seen the guy who you walk around, he's just banging that keyboard. You, there's no need to do that. You want to make sure that you've got good, normal, light touch so you don't um, aggravate your fingers. You want to use the backrest of the chair to, so you make sure you get full support, especially for your lower back because that keeps everything else in line. Uh, adjust your chair height to make sure that, that you can do all this. You know, If your chair is too low, you're going to get uh, too much strain on your feet and on your legs. And if it's too high, your feet will dangle, and that's not good either. Um, keep your shoulders relaxed and your elbows in close. You, know, you don't want to be all spread out. And you want to sit with your head and neck in upright position, make, even when you're on the phone. So you want to make sure that you're not too far forward or that you're not holding the phone between your ear and your shoulder. That's not a good thing either. There are solutions for that. So we've kind of gone through a session workstation, and we'll talk in a little bit more detail about some of these things later. Um, 
but you want to you know assess your body as well. That's the other part of your of your environment there. The three B's: blink, breathe, and breaks. So as we all know, it's it's important to blink. And now we normally blink 12 to 15 times a minute, but when you concentrate, um, you tend to stare and blink less often, which is not good for your eyes. You know, it cuts down on your tear production and the oil production that, that's in your eyes normally, and it will cause your eyes to strain. So you want to make sure that you allow for rest periods. And I mean, you know, we're talking 10 seconds, if that. You want to make sure that you kind of look away and focus on something far away for a few seconds, and that will kind of help you get everything back. And um, yawning also will uh, cause your eyes to water. So that's a good thing. I think most people don't have any trouble yawning. But you want to concentrate on keeping up with a normal blink rate while you're at work. So now we're on to breathing. Everybody understands breathing pretty much. But stressful situations can cause us to hold our breath, which will tighten up the muscles in your body. And as we talked about before, that causes strain on all your muscles and just kind of generally makes you feel bad. So when you breathe correctly, you take in even and steady breaths and try to breathe as deep as possible. And this will kind of help you relax, which will, remove, will relieve stress and also take some of the strain off your body. And then breaks. Um, that's probably the most important of these things because if you're doing those, you're taking the breaks, you're doing the other things as well. Uh, you know, working on computers just from the posture and the concentration puts a lot of strain on your eyes and on your body. So, you know, you kind of want to make sure you look away from your screen occasionally so that your eyes can, eye muscles can flex and you can just kind of relax a little bit. Get up and walk around. You know, your body doesn't like to sit for that long uh, without, you know, in the same position. So get up, take a walk around. It might be a walk to the bathroom, it might be a walk to the printer, uh, whatever. And then if you're not going to do that, you know, stand up and stretch and just, you know, just take a short little walk around. So that's the three B's. Now, stretching, a lot of people don't think about stretching. Uh, it's not the same as exercising, so you don't have to go to the gym and do this. Um, and when you do the stretches, you want to hold for about 10 seconds or so, you know, and it should not cause you any pain. And if your doctor tells you not to do it, don't do it. But there's multiple um, exercises you can do. There's multiple references where you can find these things. Um, but you want to be looking at, you know, shoulder shrugs and wrist and hand stretches, foot rotations, uh, just the basic things, you know, where you get work out a lot of that stress. So we kind of went over. Um, some of the problems and some of the things. Now let's talk about some quick fixes for uh, for some of these things. You know, you want to reduce that glare so you cut down on your eye strain. And several ways to do that. The easiest way is to adjust the lighting if you can, uh, or adjust the shades. You know, in your home or office, wherever you may be. And if neither of those work, then you can put a glare reducing attachment on your monitor. Then those things really do help. Some of us are getting up there a little bit, so we may have to change the font size to something a little larger um, you know, than we used to so that we can see it. And red or blue backgrounds and fonts tend to, to put a little more strain on your eyes, so it's a good idea not to use those if you can help it. You also want to think about reducing the angle of your work. So you can adjust the uh, the distance from the document to the monitor or move your monitor around up or down depending uh, so you keep that proper neck alignment. And we talked about before, give your eyes a break. Look away, blink, and then if you need glasses, get the glasses. Some people don't want to get glasses and I understand that, but it's a fact of life sometimes. So onto your back and neck. You know, you want to make sure that your lower back is supported properly. So sit up straight. Nobody sits up straight, but everyone needs to sit up, to sit up straight. Um, you can use a rolled towel or one of those um, back lumbar rolls, whatever, to make sure that you sit up straight. Because, um, again, that's your lower back is the key to it. You have to keep that in position. It holds everything else there. Uh, adjust your chair. We talked about earlier, you know, if your chair is too low, it's gonna, your feet are going to be uh, 
have too much pressure, and if it's too high, then your knees are going to have too much pressure on them. And you want to vary your foot placement. You want to make sure that whatever you're doing, your feet are flat. So you can use a box or a binder or a you know, specific foot rest or, or whatever you need, but you just want to make sure that you have that 90 degree or greater angle of, of, of your knees. So on the telephone use, I know we've all seen this. Use a phone cradle. You know, don't, that's one of those neck rest things. Um, holding it between your ear and your shoulder is not the right way to do it. That's one of the easiest ways to get back and neck pain. Um, switch ears. You know, that's, if, you, if you don't have one of those things and you've got to hold it in your hand, switch ears so you're not holding a static posture for too long. And use your speakerphone. I mean, if it's not going to annoy your coworkers too much, use your speakerphone if you can't, don't have any of those things. Or you can get a headset. You know, that, that's probably the simplest way because then you keep a, a neutral position all the time. And then some more back and neck things. Move your monitor. You, know, to use, you can use phone books. You can use reams of paper. You can use something on a binder. Whatever you can find. It does not have to be a specific ergonomic device for that. And then reposition your work. You know, you want to make sure that you get everything, your, your piece of paper as close to your monitor as you can so you don't have to continuously turn your head. Um, and you, know, you can use a document holder for that. Those are really, really good. That's one of the best things you can do. <clears throat> now onto your arms, wrists, and hands. Um, adjust that keyboard height. You know, some, some places or some desks will have adjustable keyboard drawers, uh, but if you don't, you can, you can use your chair. You can adjust your chair the proper way to get to the right height. Remember, it's about that 90 degree angle of your elbows. You can raise your chair up. You can set your, your uh, keyboard on your lap. And then you want to make sure that you have those little feet on the back of your keyboard. You want, you want to use those things because that changes the angle of the keyboard so you don't have to change the angle of your wrist. And then um, watch for correct, watch for and correct, excuse me, repetitious reaching. So if you use your stapler every 30 seconds, you want to keep that stapler close to you, in front of you, or just off within easy reach so you don't have to move and reach across your desk for it. And that applies to your mouse or to your water bottle or whatever you know, you're going to continuously reach for. And again, center your work. You want neutral posture. Right? We're talking neutral posture the entire time. Your, your head at a proper angle and looking straight, as close to straight ahead as you can. Same thing with the mouse. Uh, you want to move it you know, closer or farther away so you don't have to reach to either side for it. And check your mouse operation. You know, make sure you've got proper um, travel speed so that your cursor moves it doesn't move too, sl uh, too slow, so you have to move your arm a long way to go a short distance on the screen. And then the arms of your chair, you know, adjust those up or down so that you get that 90 degree proper angle. And then if they're not cushioned, you can wrap them with a towel. I think a lot of them are these days, but some still aren't. And as we talked about earlier, don't pound on your keyboard. It doesn't make you a better typist. The only thing it does is irritate your, your body. So those are kind of some of the quick fixes. It's, it's all really about keeping a neutral posture with your elbows and in in your wrists in the proper position and, you're, and sitting up straight. So we know all these things now. So we're going to take about a minute or so and look and see what is wrong with this picture and see how many things you can pick out. So we will start now.
All right, so that's about a minute. So let's see what everyone came up with. And I know this guy works in everybody's office. I have one of them in my office too. So the main thing is look at his chair. His chair is entirely too low, and you can tell that by the way his elbows are. And if you notice, his foot is up on the base of his chair. And look at his knee angle. His, he needs to be sitting up higher so that he doesn't get strain in the back of his knee and cut off his circulation. Monitor's a little bit too high, but not that, that's not the worst thing. Um, look where his keyboard is. It's all the way up on his desk next to his monitor. So look at, he has to have his arms straight out. And that's, you know, so he's resting his left wrist on the corner of his, his workstation, which is going to put strain on his wrist and contribute to carpal tunnel. He's also reaching all the way over for his mouse uh, when he should be sitting up higher and have it move closer to him so he's got a neutral posture. That The position of his arms is the opposite of what we're talking about. That is a non-neutral posture. Um, we talked about reaching out. His feet aren't flat. And his phone, you can see, it's kind of hard to see in the picture, but you can see on his right side he's talking on the phone. Um, and he doesn't have a cradle or a headset on that. So those are the main things that are wrong with that. Um, so let's take a look then and see what's correct with it. Now he doesn't have glare on his screen. His lighting above him is, is correct. Um, and he is wearing glasses. It's, it's hard to see in the picture, but he is. If you look, he's using a document holder over on the right-hand side, and then there's something taped to his cubicle on the left. So that's good because he's not having to look down and back up and down and back up. And then his monitor is, you know, between 18 and 28 inches away. So he's got he's got that going for him. So uh, he's not a complete mess, but it's not good. So keep those things in mind when you're setting up your workstation. You're getting ready to do your work. You know, don't don't look like this guy. This guy is not doing it right. So that's the information on, you know, quick um, information on workstation setup. So now I'm going to hand it over to Courtney Seamer, and she's going to uh, discuss what to do when an employee's injured. Thank you. Um, first, on the first slide, we see first thing I want to mention um, that is in all caps is never allow paperwork to endanger an employee's life. Um, if you have an injured worker who it's a life-threatening emergency, although it's work comp, call 911 and send them or send them to the emergency room. Um, oftentimes I get a question come to me that asks, well, what hospital or what emergency room can I send them to um, based on, you know, doctors and network or what have you. It doesn't, a hospital or an emergency room never has to be in network. You can send them to absolutely any hospital or any emergency center, um, preferably the nearest one. Uh, but don't worry about in a life-threatening emergency um, if that hospital per se is in network. Um, send them there first. Um, we can complete the forms later. Uh, we should complete the forms as soon as possible so that we can get the injured worker the treatment and the assistance he needs for the claim. However, you know, common sense just dictates us to help the injured worker first um, and then as fast as possible get that paperwork in. If it's not a life-threatening injury um, and it's your, you know, back strain or finger cut or what have you, um, non-emergency type injury, that is when we would send them to the nearest authorized um, clinic that accepts workers' comp patients. Um, I also want to mention in this part too, while the forms in the accident injury report form does need to be completed to the best of your knowledge, um, it does not have to be 100% complete in order to submit. Oftentimes we get questions um, asking us if they can submit it even though they're missing one bit of information. So for example, if you have everything filled out but you're missing a date of birth or a rate of pay, can you still submit the form? Absolutely. Um, we should never let one little piece or even two little pieces of information hold up reporting the claim. 
the number one most important thing is to get that claim and that accident and injury report form reported per the instructions on top of the accident form as soon as possible. If there is missing information, that is okay. We can always um, fill that in and get that updated with the adjuster after the claim is in. We cannot start assisting the injured worker with um, follow-up care or if they need a nurse or if they need medication until that claim is in. So just really important we get those injuries um, reported as soon as possible. Um, the only other thing I'll mention on that is that another question, another popular question we get out there is, can I report or can I submit the injury report even if the injured worker has not signed it? While there is a place for the employee to sign it, and if they're available, that is ideal, please do not hold up reporting the claim if you do not have the signature. Um, all in, it's noted on here, all injuries can be reported um, per the instructions on the top of the accident and injury report form, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to a um, dedicated phone, fax, and email we have with our carrier. Third bullet is before you have the need, look up your nearest provider. This is a really important um, strategy, I think, and, and to best help you help your injured workers when unfortunately there is an accident, is have your providers ready. Um, in the next slide, we're going to talk about how to look up providers, but if you already established the clinic that you're going to send your injured workers to, it's going to be a much smoother process once you do have somebody that gets injured. Report the injury. Like we said, I already went over complete the accident injury report form. Again, just keep in mind not everything has to be 100% um, filled in. We can always get that updated with the carrier later. Um, send the injured worker to the treatment facility. In the packet, we have a work comp packet of what to do when you get injured, all the forms you need, all the information you need. Um, there is a form in there that's called the treatment authorization form that you can actually just print out of the packet and send it with the injured worker when they go to the clinic. Um, this will provide the clinic with the work comp billing information, the address, um, letting them know that we do require a five panel drug screen to be done um, post accident. Uh, everything they basically need to know so that you don't have to write everything down to send with the injured worker. Um, this will cut down on bills being incorrectly routed back to you. Um, it should send them to our carrier at the correct billing address. If for some reason you should receive a bill for a drug test or any other kind of you know, procedure related to the workers' comp claim, you could forward those to CodeVantage and we will assist in getting them processed for payment. Um, submit the accident injury report by the following instructions. We went over that on the previous slide. But again, the instructions are directly on the top of the form of where to send those or report the claim to our dedicated email and phone line. Um, I just wanted to talk about, to the clinics. When you do establish the clinic, um, my recommendation is really to establish a relationship with that clinic. So within the workers' comp packet, there's actually, um, it's like page six or seven, I believe, where you can, it gives you the step-by-step -step instruction of where to go to locate a clinic and how to look up those using your address. You can type in your zip code, for example, and it will give you the nearest providers within a 10-mile radius. There's actually also a feature on there that you can click that says Create Panel. Um, this will create an informal panel for you, just so something kind of neat and nice to post of the clinics that are near you, say, for example, an occupational clinic or the nearest hospital or emergency room. I would re highly recommend establishing a relationship with the clinic that you are going to send your injured workers to. Give them a call. Go visit them. Tell them that, you know, your business is nearby and unfortunately if you ever have a work-related injury, you would like to send your employees there. That way you kind of know who they are, where they are, they know who you are. Um, the first time you have somebody that is has to go see a doctor at the clinic, you know they're going to already have an established relationship with you. That's going to make the communication with them go much smoother. Um, last bullet point on this slide is if necessary, the injured 
employees may use the first fill program to obtain prescribed medication. This is really, um, the purpose of this is to really assist an injured worker before the claims truly get in the system. Um, we all know that there's a process when you report a claim and you know sometimes that process can take up to 24 hours for the claim to get in the carrier system and for an adjuster to be assigned and make contact with you and the injured worker. Well, in that 24 hours, they may have been to a clinic and you know, a doctor may have prescribed an antibiotic or some kind of prescription to them. Um, if they go to Walgreens, for example, and they don't have a, a, a claim number yet, you know, how are they supposed to fill the claim? The first fill program is in the packet. It provides them with a card that will get them their first fill for the prescription without that claim number. Um, there are some limitations on there. For example, there's a max day of 14 day max supplied um, on that. And there's also a max um, dollar amount of $150. So there are controls on that. Um, however, it's going to assist the injured worker if they do need immediate prescription um, before we actually have all the processes in with the claim. So that is all I had on reporting a workers' comp claim. Again, remember you guys, if you have any questions, that you can submit them on the chat. Um, and another way you can get uh, some information regarding the, the ergonomics or the injury reporting is to ask these to your safety consultant directly. Um, we have six um, highly experienced uh, safety consultants throughout the country, um, just you know, covering different uh, geographic territories. And you know, our primary responsibility is to provide client consultation, claims investigation, uh, just you know, workers' comp surveys and to provide safety references to our clients so that they can be used to, you know, to help our clients improve the safety of their workplaces. So please feel free to reach out to your uh, assigned safety consultant. All right, well, thanks everybody Thank for you. your time. Y'all have a great day.